Hello everybody, this is the Structures Guy. Today we're discussing the structural engineering of the Building Bridge Hybrid in London, the Broadgate Exchange House. It was completed in 1990 and then was awarded the American Institute of Architects AIA prestigious 25 year award in 2015. The Exchange House is an elegant 10 floor or 60 meter high office building that spans over the merging tracks of London's Liverpool Street Station. The complex intersections of railway tracks and the lack of space to place structure between the lines made the site challenging. The tracks cover the majority of the site and had to be kept intact thus requiring the project to be built to span over a large portion of the tracks. The site for the exchange house building is located where the tracks begin to converge, which prevents the placement of columns on a typical grid. AIA has remarked, the structural and the architectural solution for this development were entirely intertwined. Embracing the constraints of the site and using them to fuel a clear, elegant solution that, that dramatically overcomes the challenges beneath it." End quote. In modern times, these design challenges have been associated with two classes of structure, the tower and the bridge. The tower is controlled by its ability to resist wind and seismic lateral loads. The bridge structure, on the other hand, must provide long-span support to connect areas separated by obstacles either nat natural or human-made. Both classes of structures were combined here and thus creating a building bridge hybrid. The building is suspended over the train tracks below using four tight arches. Two are outside the building and two are inside it. The tight arch bridges are parabolic arches at a height of 7 story and a span of 256 feet or 78 meters. Only 5% of the exchange house footprint touches the ground, which is a large slab underneath the exchange house and also the roof of the underlying tracks. The centrally located elevator core, fire stairs, and even the lobby are suspended from the bridge structure, touching the plaza beneath it out of necessity for access to the ground rather than, the, rather than support. By elevating the building, the opportunity to bring an open space beneath it was created, connecting the areas around it. Several solutions were considered, among them an exterior 10-story express truss system, a 10-story catenary suspension system, and a, par a parabolic arch system, but it was determined through different considerations and analyses that the tight arch bridge system was the most optimal. The tight arch system offered the most direct load transfer to the piers, simpler connections, a conventional construction method, and was the most efficient system. The resulting arch structure also presented simplicity, clarity of form and function, and an ability to be architecturally articulated. The four arches create three bays that are 18.5 meters, 15 meters, and 18.5 uh, meters between the arches. Vertical hangers and columns are supported on the arches at node points, and the floor framing members are connected to the hangers or columns through a typical shear connection. The gravity load transfer from the floor to the floor beams to the hangers or columns. This creates point loads on the arches, which is then creates vertical reaction and horizontal thrust at both ends of the tight arch bridge. The horizontal thrust gets, gets resisted by the primary and the secondary ties and the vertical reactions get transferred and resisted by the piers, then the foundations. The piers and the walls continue down to the track level where they are supported on piles. The pile foundation construction sequence was organized as not to disturb the operation of the trains along the adjacent tracks. Along each end of the building, there is an exposed vertical truss in the middle 15 meter bay that connects the floor diaphragm to resist wind loads on the broad building face and also gives out of plane stability to the arch system. 
Also, the diagonal bracings in the tight arch help absorb the kick forces from any non-uniform loads and prevents the buckling of the tight arch. The structural engineering for this hybrid is actually much more complex than I explained here when it comes to uniform versus non-uniform loading analysis, system components, the presence of diagonals, lateral systems, floor framing, thermal loading, connections, and much more. Given that the building was made using structural steel, which is not fire resistant, fire protection measures had to be taken to ensure structural safety in an event of a fire. All interior elements were conventionally fire protected according to British standards. In addition, the interior spaces were protected by a sprinkler system with an emergency power backup to improve the system reliability to 99%. With this degree of protection on the inside, it was possible to review the fire protection needs of the exterior elements in open air on a rational basis from fire loads expected inside the building. The design for fire for exterior elements included four thorough and complex stages, which you can read about in the research paper attached in the description below. The objective of fire design done for this hybrid is to illustrate structural safety and integrity under different fire conditions. For this bridge building hybrid, a challenging design problem developed the creation of an innovative structure and exciting architecture. This project exhibits the tradition of building design in which architects and structural engineers can, by working together, produce an elegant solution. A building whose structural and architectural designs complement one another. I hope you enjoyed learning more about this project in this video. Please like, comment, and subscribe so you don't miss next videos. See you next time!